Up next, we have Andrew Stiles. Now, Andrew loves to make homes for birds and, in the process, helps young people find their own place in the natural world. Very cool. Please join me in welcoming Andrew to the stage. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, thank you, Sheila, for kind of setting the stage and uh, preparing me for leading you down the next train of thought that I'd like you to introduce you to. So, I was born in the most perfect place on earth, and just in the nick of time. Such is the bold assertion of Henry David Thoreau when reflecting on his life in his famous book, Walden, written in a cabin at the edge of town, close to a special woodland that opened up the world to him. I can relate to Henry, having the good fortune of growing up in Lake Bonavista. <laughs> A short walk was all it took for kids like me, maybe hers, to wander down to the Bow River where forts and frolicking and fishing and having a good time with friends was the order of the day. Indeed, I felt like this was my prescribed habitat, a true home and native land, a place where I could be me. Relationships with the natural world were fostered and imagination worked wonders with an abundance of free time. I am forever grateful Mrs. Pettigrew, my grade two teacher, who introduced me to this place, a brilliant lady that she was, she masterminded a field trip where our entire class went on a 12 kilometer round trip walk down to the confluence of Fish Creek and the Bow River in one day and back. On our way, we saw cows and coyotes out in the fields, watched hawks swoop down gophers, snakes slither off of sun-warmed rocks, and caught leopard frogs in ponds where Sokomi Lake now sits. It was a lesson in what creatures live close by, and those wild neighbors I eventually came to think of as fellow Calgarians. By grade four, I thought of this region as an extension of my home and was not about to let it be taken from me. When I learned that freeways and factories were slated for this land, I was enraged and I organized my classmates to write a plethora of letters to try and dissuade the power people from ruining it. <laughs> my pitch to describe this empty place on the map is already occupied by a host of birds and animals that have every right to keep their homes as we did. And lo and behold, a small miracle happened. Deerfoot Trail was rerouted over the boat at Douglas Dale, and Fish Creek Valley was purchased by the province for a mere $15 million. <coughs> Would you agree? Possibly one of the best returns on taxpayer investment ever. <laughs> so our next stop on the path to being an environmentalist was the Inglewood Bird Sanctuary, where my father signed us up for a bird ID course. And intertwined with the stories of all their names was the plight of many birds that were in decline due to an ever-increasing human footprint. It was here I was given an idea of how I could be not just a passive enjoyer of wild spaces and creatures, but also a helper. 400 birdhouses were there, stacked up by the garage. I thought to myself, why birds and birdhouses made for them? And the city naturalist filled me in on a little story that non-native starlings and house sparrows were displacing our native bluebirds from their natural nesting places, usually old woodpecker holes. And so he challenged me to build 50. And of course, that would require a winter of dumpster diving and construction sites and a lot of sawing and hammering. Presto, before you knew it, I was in the landlord <coughs> business. And for the next few years, checking out the Bluebird Trail was my favorite father-son activity. Together, we learned where to place the houses, how to work with landowners, and do basic research. Our first year was very slim. One little family of Bluebirds moved in. But over the years, it steadily grew, and then we expanded it to swallows and wrens, and involved other people as well that were just as concerned about the natural world. And so over the years, this simple grassroots idea is now a continent-wide network of networks with fellow enthusiasts maintaining about 5,000 birdhouses in this region alone. And so you can think of it as a nursery that produces some 20,000 fledglings annually, each one helping us out by making a little dent in the mosquito population. <laughs> so, I am grateful call Calgary home, as I'm sure you are too. 
But what of our ever sprawling borders and the nearby wilderness that gives us the distinction over so many other places in our world? In making much of Alberta ideal for human prosperity, we have to say that our wild neighbors have taken the hit. And what remains of our wild spaces could sometimes be called fragmented, polluted, with biological invaders or under constant threat from some money-making scheme. My greatest environmental fear is not the ever-expanding economy, but the consequences of keeping a generation indoors. Robert Bateman assesses the situation simply by saying kids with less nature are more prone to anxiety, nearsightedness, obesity, self-esteem, the list goes on, but Bateman elegantly spins a positive alternative by simply saying, I bet you could solve all the world's problems if everybody became a bird watcher. <laughs> and so, is it possible to inspire a generation of youthful bird watching? I've been trying by utilizing building themes in our school curriculum, being a guest teacher for a day, over the course of a year giving 2,000 students the pride of home ownership by bringing in a mobile wood shop and having kids hammer together, saw, power drill, even in grade one, they can put together a functional birdhouse. And so over the years, I've heard many joy-filled reports about what bird families have moved into the neighborhood and the dramas of squirrels and magpies and pesky cats in the zoos. More importantly, each kid gets to watch a live nature show, one that they help make happen. And so my other pitch to teachers, why don't we take the students bird watching for real, somewhere within walking distance, and experience a wild place that harbors more creatures than most of us are aware of. I know of nowhere else with such a diversity of natural habitats within a major city than Calgary. We are so blessed. You can think of it as an extended classroom for those with imagination to see it. And often, that formative experience that I had is replicated with the next generation. By expanding their world to the wild fringes just beyond their neighborhoods, we help them realize that Calgary is more than a built environment, but a very special place where thoughtful citizens in eras past had the foresight to leave some places just as they were. So, who will fight for these places in the future? We pray in our anthem, God keep our land glorious and free. I think this prayer is most likely to be answered by those who've experienced and cared and been shown that their actions will make a difference. If you're wondering what to do this weekend, why not go explore some natural treasure not too far from home? Bring along some kids, maybe binoculars or a litter bag. Henry Thoreau also stated, in wilderness is the preservation of the world. The question of how much of this essential resource we leave the next generation will be a large part of how we will be remembered. May we not fail our children or the many other generations of wild creatures that call this place home. Thank you very much.